Welcome back to Wonderworld. We're already six weeks in, if you can believe, and in this week's episode, the park's going to be getting his second big coaster, an Intamin family launch coaster. Think Hagrid's at Universal Lands of Adventure, but with less Harry Potter and more Wonderworld. Just like the two episodes for the Mike Big Dipper, this Intamin coaster will be built in this episode and themed in the next, so hold off on name suggestions for this week. I'll let you decide when you know more of the story of the full coaster. However, I will let you in on a little part of the story. Remember when I said at the start of the series that this land was owned by a rich family who had lived in a castle, and that the Mac Bay Dipper was located on the grounds of the castle? Well this ride will be based around that castle, going through and around it, and also meaning that all the rides in the park will follow the same story, building off of each other, and creating a park-wide experience for guests to uncover the entire story of Wonderworld. For the actual coaster, I decided against using the normal track I'd use for an Intamin coaster, that being the in-game Vector Coaster model because it doesn't smooth particularly well and I wanted something that more accurately represented the newer type of Intamin track. There is some coaster types in the game that look like the newer Intamin track types, but these are more of the bigger style, making it look like Hyperion or Skyrush, whereas this coaster track would look identical to Velocicoaster or Pantheon, hence why I went for the Premier Rides track, which looks more accurate as it's smaller, and it also smooths incredibly well. So if you're looking to build one of your first coasters in the game, and you want to build an Intamin Blitz style coaster, then I couldn't recommend this track type enough. It's so easy to use, and like I said, it smooths so easily. As you'll see in the next episode, I've also decided not to put myself through the insane task of adding the pulsing light into the track like I did last time. There will be some cool looking ambient light features, and maybe a few like pulsing moving lights on the track or around the area, but the actual pulsing light that followed the track of the previous coaster, I'm not doing for this one. I don't have the time or the mental capacity to do that over again. It was um, quite draining to say the least. This part here over the water is inspired by where the two trains on the Hagrid's ride duel each other, only that this one's over water, which makes it cooler. An important thing that I've learned when designing my coasters is to always look at how the coaster looks from the rest of the park. As you can see here, I'm looking at how the actual coaster looks from Main Street, just to see if the sight line looks right. This part here, you can really see what I mean about the two coasters dueling each other. And because of where I've placed this portion from when I was looking at the sight lines, this will be one of the main parts of the coaster that you'll see when walking up to it, just the two trains speeding past each other, which will be such a cool element. After this part over the water, I meandered the train back to the station. This being the end of the first draft of the coaster. But as you'll see later in the speed build, I had some very different ideas later on for this section of the ride. When I go on to theme the coaster for next week's episode, this helix section here I'll probably make indoors, or maybe even in a cave so it feels like it's underneath the castle, just giving an interesting finale to the ride. Then after this, I did my usual smoothing and reprofiling pass of the entire coaster. This is the point I was on about where I just started deleting loads of tracks because there was just something that I wasn't happy with this part of the ride. So instead of it just going straight into the third launch, I added a special element. Now it may be slightly cliche now how I add this element on pretty much every family coaster I make, but again, we have a drop track. And especially since the drop track tutorial I made was quite long ago and when I didn't talk in my videos, I thought this would be a great opportunity to show again how I make drop tracks. So as you can see what I've done there is add a block break and then a LSM holding station which is set to around 2 seconds. The block break just slows it down and makes it obviously the block section to go into the uh, hold of the drop track. And then as you can see here I'm just creating the turnaround section that you won't be able to see because it'll be covered by the building. Now before I moved on to the rest of it, I realised that the train would need to slow down first before it entered this block section and the drop track, so I added this quick break before it went in. Then after the train is held for around 2 seconds at the LSM holding section at the top, you add another one just after the turnaround exactly below it, so that it looks like it's dropped onto the track below. Then after this obviously it just holds in that LSM holding section for around 2 seconds before it launches again into the rest of the ride. Another change I made to the ride was adding this helix just before the second launch. I did this to not only increase the duration of the ride, but also make each section of the track the same length so that the trains can perfectly duel each other at some point. 
This took a lot of faffing around, especially with the release times of the trains from the station, but once the effect actually works and the trains can duel each other at some points, it's definitely worth doing. After this, I added a path around the area that went along the lake, connecting the different areas together. I then changed the section just after the third launch because I didn't like how it went into that element. Because of its views on the sightline and because of how late it is in the ride, I wanted this element to be probably the most exciting and thrilling portion of the coaster. Once the actual layout was completed, I worked my way onto the transfer tracks. I did this using the same coaster and then just creating the track pieces and then once I'd finished disconnecting them from the actual layout. And then I did my usual transfer track structure of steel eye beams and locomotive rails. Just like with the last coaster, walking the queue of this ride will be the main way the story is told to the guests. So it needs to be as elaborate, interesting and thematic as possible. The experience obviously begins with a grand entrance, being the bridge over the lake, and then followed by a winding queue that will go through buildings and around different parts of the coaster. The part of the queue that I'm building here where the two paths nearly touch each other is done on purpose. This is so that on quieter days they can open up this cut through and the guests don't have to walk the full length of the queue when it's empty. Just an element of realism that's always good to get into your parks is adding a maintenance road around the back of all the attractions. This is the route that the maintenance team would use, especially when using bigger vehicles to access all the attractions. Because this coaster has so many launches, it gives you the option to add different evac points along the ride. This is just where that if the train failed to launch, it could safely evacuate guests from the ride. So I added these platforms along all the launch points of the coaster, and then some steps so the guests could walk off if it ever got stuck there. One thing that I haven't actually done before when making drop tracks in Planet Coaster is to add the actual mechanical structure of the drop track itself. Obviously this doesn't function in game and is purely just for aesthetic purposes, and you won't be able to see it at most points when you're actually on the ride. But nevertheless it's an interesting piece to create and make you think about how the ride system actually works. After adding the beam that would run along the bottom of the track, I added these rails to the side of the structure which is where the track would slide down. So in usual Corvus form it's happened again. I had to look at the existing supports of the ride and they just weren't good, especially the ones over water, they weren't banked properly, so it's going to have to happen. The coaster wants it. I don't want it, but I assume you lot want it, so we're custom supporting the entire coaster. I'd like to say it wasn't as bad as it looks, but then again I haven't included the 3 hours of time lapse it took me to do this in the video. Anyway, they do look good though I suppose, better than the in game ones definitely, I know there is some better TMTK ones out there, but I want this park to be an example for what you can do with the game, and especially console players, obviously we don't have TMTK on console, so seeing this you can just create out of basic art pieces, anyone can do it. If you're wanting to custom support your own coaster and don't really know where to start, then you can do what I do and just look at existing rides and how they're supported. For this coaster, I just looked at how Hagrid was supported, where they had these connection pieces onto the track, and then the beams, and then the actual supports, into the ground. And then because parts of this coaster are over water, the actual concrete footers have to be out of the water to avoid the metal from rusting. Go on, you can admit it, you love watching me custom support track, don't you? I'm sure you do, that's why you're here isn't it?
I've custom supported I think about the first third of the coaster here and as you can already see they look so much better than the in-game ones just in terms of how they're angled and that, what parts of the track they support they're much more realistic so if you haven't already I highly urge you give this a go. On to the next part of the drop track tutorial now where I'm going to be adding the rider cam machine to actually hide how the drop track works. You do this by adding a trigger just before the train actually stops for this portion of the ride and then linking it to the rider cam machine which will make the screen black. You make the screen go black by selecting the black colour grading preset and then at the bottom I'd set the fade time anywhere between 1 and 2 seconds. I've then included some footage here of me testing out the machine to try and get it to work. As you can see on this clip, the train is still moving as it starts to get darker, which ideally you want it to stop and then get darker, so I went back and changed a few of the numbers just to see the different ways you can get it to work. And then after a little bit more tinkering, changing the numbers a few times, it works perfectly. I included this clip here to show that you can actually be quite creative with the way you custom support a coaster. With how close these two sections of track are here, it would make sense that when designing the coaster, these two track pieces would use the same support. This cuts down on the amount of steel needed to support the ride, and it's just a more efficient way of designing it. And there we are, this week's coaster's finished. Thank you all again for watching, and especially thank you for those who watched last week's video. The support on that specific video has been absolutely insane, so thank you all so much for watching that, and just the whole series. I really hope you're enjoying it. Now I'll leave you with an off-ride and a POV for this coaster and then a tease for next week's episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then.